All right, once again, good afternoon and welcome back to Toyota Stadium and the 2023 FCS Football Championship here in Frisco, Texas. Glad to see everybody once again. I'm Jim Powers. I'll be moderating all weekend for everyone, and we'll kick things off. The folks from Fargo have arrived. It's North Dakota State once again, and their head coach, Matt Ensign. We'll ask Coach to opening statement, and then we'll go ahead for questions. Coach, yep. take it away, and congratulations on being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Excited group of young men, coaches, support staff. Uh, great trip yesterday. Uh, got down here, and uh, you could tell the energy level continues to grow and swell. Um, I'm sure I'll get a question today. How is it different than any other trip? And they're all different because it's a different group. Um, super excited about the uh, very, really good opponent we're going to play uh, on Sunday. Um, but right now we got we got to practice. we got some things that we need to continue to – uh, to shore up, continue to get better, hopefully here the last couple of days. But uh, it, it's going to be a great game. And uh, we know uh, our opponent's a very good football team with a ton of ton of tools, ton of skill kids all over the place. Um, so it'll be an exciting one for both fan bases. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. We will go ahead and open it up for questions. Once again, if you could state your name and your affiliation. And I know we have someone on Twitter, or excuse me, on Zoom, um, if that individual would like to ask a question, just raise your hand and we'll bring you into the conversation in a little bit. So we'll now open it up for questions for Coach. We'll go back row first, and then we'll come here to the second row. Good afternoon, Coach Gene Clemens, The Athletic. Um, not really more on X's and O's, but more just on the feel of coming down here. I know you said it's always different. One thing we were just having a, a kind of a fun discussion about was everybody came out in gray when you came when you guys came out to take the picture. Then you came in here in this extremely lovely hoodie. <laughs> like and I was saying, wow, that the gray was was kind of a low key look, but this hoodie right here, can you just explain this for us oh, because this is a fantastic <laughs> look right here. This is uh uh, our military appreci appreciation day that we have late in the late in the year, probably in November, uh, usually around Veterans Day. Uh, this is Operation Hat Trick, and I just threw it on because I'm trying to get one step closer to practice. And this was my practice hoodie and getting ready to go. So, just grabbed it because it was in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go second row right here. Coach Devin Fry of Valley News Live. Um, I know we talked after the Incarnate Word game wanting to get healthy and get back up to speed after that. With these past weeks that have gone by, how how do you feel about that progress has come for you guys? Do you feel like you guys have got as healthy as you wanted to after the Incarnate Word game? <laughs> well, no, you, we were never going to get health, as healthy as I would like to. We're still going to have a handful of guys that, that won't play for us on Sunday. But uh, everyone who will participate is as healthy as they've been probably since fall camp. Uh, we've had a good winter camp. Uh, we've been able to get some guys healthier. I don't know uh, if it's healthy enough to, to help us. We'll find out on Sunday. But uh, I'm excited about uh, where we're at, and, and I think our mental health is is in a good spot right now too. Our kids are excited and, and hungry to go play this game. You just mentioned knowing that. Oh, sorry. Oh, go you ahead. Just go ahead, Devin. That South Dakota State is a really good team. You've already seen them once this year. How much does how much do you feel it helps you guys going into this national championship game facing a team that you guys have faced once before in the season? Oh, I, you know, there's familiarity. There's both sides of the ball, though. I mean, it's not just you know we're from. It's not just NDSU familiar with South Dakota State, but South Dakota State's also extremely familiar with North Dakota State and have a, a pretty good beat on, on personnel, have a good beat on what each team likes to do from a schematic standpoint. So I anticipate there'll be a little bit of a chess match at different times uh, on Sunday, but at, at the end of it, it's, it's the team who's going to be able to execute the best. Uh, the team who makes the fewest errors uh, is probably going to have the greatest chance to, to win. Go back row. Coach Craig Haley from Stats Perform. How are you? Good. How are you? Real well. Um, what did, what is different with the physicality of S South Dakota State as opposed to you know five, six, seven years ago? Well, I, I don't know if much has cha changed on the along the offensive line. Uh, I go back five, six years ago. Uh, they, they they were pretty pretty talented football team as well. I I remember uh, uh, 2016 them coming into the Fargo Dome and beating us. 2017. 
uh, them whipping us in, in Brookings. And so uh, this isn't a, a program that just appeared. Uh, you know, I think they've, they've been a, a player in FCS football for a number of years now. And Coach Stegelmeyer does an unbelievable job through the recruiting process. And the, they got a great developmental program going on down there as well. And, uh, you know, I think it's pretty unique when you have two programs that lean on high school talent uh, that are able to finish the year uh, pitting against one another here on Sunday. Do you have, is there a different feel among your team because of their recent success against you? Haven't, we haven't talked about it because all we have to go is 1-0 this week, and the next one's the most important one. Uh, I think there's, there's learning opportunities from previous games, but we don't want to dwell on it. Uh, one of the sayings that we've kind of utilized is learn, burn, and return. Uh, we need to learn from our past and, and uh, then get over it, and then we got to move forward, um, sit around and worry about what happened back in October. It's going to create a lot of fear and anxiety within our team. So uh, we're excited for the, for the competition. We know, it's, we know they're a really good football team, and, and, but to get here, you have to be. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Let's go down to the front row right here, Coach, on the right. Matt Damas, OWDAY. If Eli Mostart is able to play, what can you expect out of him? He hasn't played in three and a half months. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, over the course of winter camp, he has participated in, in kind of here and there sporadically. Uh, a lot of indie uh, hasn't really seen any live reps, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how quickly he can transition back into that mode. Um, probably the, the closest thing to a live rep is maybe one or two pass rushes that he had. But, um, again, we were very uh, cautious with him as we navigated winter camp. I know you've had great success going into the state of South Dakota to get guys. Are you surprised that SDSU hasn't – I know they've tried. I know you try to keep the borders tight. But yep. that the Jacks or USD hasn't had success in getting a North Dakota player to come south? I don't know if I don't know if surprised is the right word. Um, you know, it's something that we we make sure that we, we try to do a really good job and get the best players out of the state of North Dakota, and uh, we challenge them always that the best players come play at the state university. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate to to sneak down into Sioux Falls and Watertown and and Pier and 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 get some really good football players out of the state of South Dakota, but it's never easy. Um, th there's always a connection to Brookings or, the, or, or either universities in South Dakota. We're going to go front row right here first, then we'll go over to you, and then we'll keep it here in the front row. So go ahead. Matt, Stephen Hawkins with the AP here in Dallas. Mark Gronowski, their quarterback, obviously, he got hurt in the first series when they played here the last time, lost all of last year. What have you seen in him and when you watched him on film and watched him play in the games you played already? Well, he's, he does a great job, you know, as their, their quarterback, and, he, and you can tell by the confidence that he plays with. He has great understanding of what they're doing schematically. Uh, I think just, you know, talking, you know, what I see now in January versus what I saw in October, I see a young man who looks to be much more healthy. Um, I think maybe early in the year they were trying to protect him a little bit with that knee, uh, still. Probably some trust issues. Uh, you know, I've never gone through an ACL tear like he did, but I'm sure they weren't necessarily wanting to get him involved into the quarterback run game as much as they have of late. And uh, he's become a bigger part of that. Uh, a lot of that shows up on third down where uh, they try to, you know, get you into more of a vanilla call because of the threat of quarterback run game. And uh, he just adds another, another facet to their offense. I mean, like I said, they, they got great – offense coming out of their, their backfield. Their tight ends are, are two of the best tight ends you're going to see in the country. They uh, have, you know, uh, great wide receivers that, that can not only stretch you vertically, but not afraid to run across the middle. And uh, you, then you couple that with a, a really good offensive line. Um, you know, they've done a great job of putting this group together. We'll go right here, front row on the right, Coach. Uh, Jeff Kopak with the, the form. Uh, can you get a comment on Wisniewski, two elite 90 awards in a, two years in a row? Well, it's... If anyone knows Cole, Cole is a, is a perfectionist. Um, Cole comes from uh, you know a, a family over in Sparta, Wisconsin. Uh, his stepfather is is actually currently over in Africa, uh, serving our country, and uh, I think Cole has a pretty regimented lifestyle. Uh, he knows what he likes. He's very organized. He's very probably type A, and uh, I think you see just the this re this award. Uh, it talks to the support people we have on campus. Uh, Kelly Lehman, our academic coordinator, does an unbelievable job. Our faculty and staff on campus, but also Cole and, and the time and effort it, it takes to be a student athlete at Division One level. Uh, he's going to try to be a champion in, in, in all facets. Um, 
Speaking of campus, no secret that former President Brashani threw his entire support behind the program. Have you noticed any change whatsoever with a new guy in charge? I have not. Um, I know he's super excited to be down here. Uh, I got a big handshake and a big smile from him when I saw him on the on the plane yesterday. Uh, his wife and and and. Uh, his son and daughter are here too, so I take that as all positive moves, and uh, I think Dr. Cook has done a tremendous job, um, and I know it's early in his in his tenure, but uh, uh, I've been fortunate enough to create a relationship with him, and I know he's, he's, he's excited about NDSU athletics. We're going to go right here in the front. Go ahead. Adam Shalafu, KVRR. Uh, Coach, seems like the road to Frisco has been paid by great line play for both teams, uh, really good conditioning. Uh, what are your thoughts on the battle in the trenches and how impactful that's going to be on the outcome of this game? Well, I think that is the outcome of the game. It's probably going to be whichever team can, can find an advantage up front on the offensive line, defensive line. Uh, I think both teams – pride themselves on being really good uh, in the trenches, uh, defensively and offensively. And uh, you, know, you know those two position groups are going to have a huge, huge impact on, on the outcome of the game. So uh, it, it's not a surprise. Uh, two Midwest teams uh, are going to lean on uh, you know, their offense and defensive line. Let's go in the back row. Coach, Gene Clemens Athletic. Um, you, when you played Incarnate Word, obviously they have a dynamic pass and attack and, and – and then trying to take that away, they were able to get some run a little bit more on running lanes than you would normally like to give up versus a team. Obviously, South Dakota um, State poses a much bigger threat on the ground, but they do have that threat to pass. How do you balance that defensively to be able to make sure that you don't wholesale out for to stop the run and, and Isaiah Davis, but then also – you know, take care of those guys in the, on the back end? Well, that's, that's always the conflict that you're put in uh, when you're playing good football teams is – where do you want to give some things up? Uh, you know, they do have some RPO out there, uh, some some run pass option. You know, uh, and so, you know, we're we're going to have to jump in and out of too high, single high. Uh, you know, find good times to bring pressure and try to speed up the operation. But, um, you know, that gets back to my comment earlier today. You know, there's going to be somewhat of a chess match throughout the course of the game. One because of familiarity, and two because I think it's two very good football teams that are going to play on Sunday, um, and. You know, like I said, we what we can't do is we can't give up explosive plays. Uh, they're too good not to move the football, um, and they're going to have some success on the ground and in the air. But we need to minimize uh, the the explosive plays, and we need to play better on third down than we did earlier in the year, and probably even going back to our twenty one game. Let's go. Is that? I'm sorry. Is that the? Is that what you're going to like these practices? You're you're. Anxious to get out to practice. Is that kind of what you want to make sure you're cleaning up in these last? Well, just just assign, communication, uh, assignment, uh, special teams wise. This, you know, being down in Texas, all of a sudden there are some other distractions. We have a lot of family down here. Uh, we have a handful, about a half dozen kids who are from the area. Um, you just want to get them back into the into the game. Uh, yesterday was a, a early morning practice. We haven't practiced for over 24 hours, so that's my excitement. It's just getting back out there and making sure we get back to football because ultimately that's why we're down here. All right, we have time for two more questions. We'll go right here. Uh, Jack Wallace, Valley News Live. Uh, looking a little bit more at Davis on what he's been able to do on the ground. The first four games didn't get in the end zone once, and then nine straight in a row scoring, including all three of the playoff games and getting a couple against Delaware. So you talked about just sort of slowing down the run in the past, especially on the offensive yardage team. What can you do to sort of stop a lot of the scoring? Because there's been so much offensive scoring just on the running game. Well, we're going to have to play really well in the red zone. Uh, we need to tackle better than we did uh, the first time we played them, especially in the second half. Uh, that's a challenge to our guys. And uh, we've done some things to try to uh, show how tackling is going to be critical, especially how many broken tackles. Uh, Isaiah Davis has had throughout the course of the year. He is a big physical runner. If he gets his shoulders, you know, parallel the line of scrimmage, he's tough to bring down. And uh, we're going to have to get a lot of people to the point of attack. But um, playing really good red zone defense, giving up field goals, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, saying within our program that they're not going to get you beat. Um, but we, we have to, again, it goes back to if we can play better on third down defensively during the course of the game, it'll help us. Um, you know, there's on average probably about 10, 10 series during the course of the game. And and we just haven't done a good enough job of, of ending those on third down when we've had opportunities. Devin, go ahead, finish this up. Um, you guys are down here in Frisco as underdogs. I know you probably haven't talked about it much within the team, but has it created a kind of different mood for this national championship game? I, I, our kids probably do know. Um, they're on their phones more than I am. Um, so I'm sure it's popped up on some sort of social media uh, 
outlet, but uh, we haven't talked about it. I, I think the fact that uh, we're down here and there's an opportunity, a great opportunity, and our kids have earned this opportunity, I think that's all the motivation that they need right now. They're, they're excited for the Bison, and they should be, because that's all we've talked about. Uh, we, we get to go win a national championship on Sunday, and we're excited about that. Awesome, Coach. Thank you so very much. Thank Good you. luck on Sunday. Thank you.